At GDC just a few months ago, NVIDIA introduced a new platform, Shield. Shield is the world's first 4K smart TV device. It runs Android TV, and it's in fact the world's most powerful smart TV platform in existence. What I'd like to talk to you about for the next few minutes, in fact, is what it means to you, how you can take advantage of it, and the amazing applications and platforms that you'll be able to build on top of Shield. This is Shield. This is the flagship of Android TV. Shield is about three things primarily. The first is it's connected to everything. Shield is a connected Android TV device and it connects to everything. It connects not just in the traditional ways, but really in a new way. It's 4K. In fact, it's the first and only 4K set-top box. The second key thing to know about Shield is that it's powered by Tegra X1. It's the most powerful processor available for Android, and really it's the most powerful mobile processor, period. Tegra X1 is powered by Maxwell, the latest generation NVIDIA GPU architecture. We can't wait to see what you're going to do with it. The third thing that makes Shield TV different from all the other devices is that it's made to game. In fact, even though it's an Android TV device and ships for the living room, it ships with a game controller and not a traditional remote control. And we did that because everyone's a gamer. Everyone deserves a game, and of course, that's the heart and soul of NVIDIA. So we ship it with a first-class game controller so that you guys can build something truly amazing. Not only streaming, television, and social applications, but games that can leverage the power of Shield. To kind of put that in perspective, this is Shield compared to really everything else. The graph is normalized performance to Apple TV. As you can see, really, it's in a class by itself. About 35 times the performance of Apple TV, but that's kind of not really fair. If you compare it to, say, the Nexus Player, which is really the only other Android TV device of merit, it's about five to seven times the performance of a Nexus Player. But really, the way to think about it is that Shield is the difference between gaming and powerful capability and really more of a special purpose device or a gadget for playing video. That's not what Shield's about. Shield's about applications. Shield's about computing. Shield's about gaming. We don't know what those apps are. We don't know what those capabilities are. We don't know what the Uber is going to be. We don't know what the Yelp's going to be. We hope you do. We hope you guys build something truly amazing with this capability for the living room. Shield is the first of a whole new wave of device designed to transform the way the living room works. Today, the living room is a stash of dedicated special purpose devices. The future of the living room is about a computing device with incredible power and capability. That's where you guys come in. You guys need to take this and do some amazing things. 4K and HDR is the future. Shield delivers on that. It has dedicated hardware for playing back 4K video at 60 frames per second with all the latest compression standards, including H.265. Of course, it supports H.264 and VP9, so what that really means is you can play all the world's content. If you want to build a streaming application, if you want to build uh, video conferencing applications, Shield can do that. In fact, Shield not only has decode capability in hardware, but encode as well. So you can actually decode and encode video without making use of the CPUs, which means you can use those CPUs or the GPUs for doing other things, designing cool UIs, designing amazing applications, and rest assured that the hardware capability for dedicated playback and encode um, is there separately from the CPU or the GPU. It also supports 10-bit color, one of the first of its kind, and it has some full support for HDMI 2.0, which is the latest standard for driving high-res TVs, including 4K. Rest assured that if you're building a 4K application or a steaming application, Shield's your platform. As the most powerful Android T device, it comes no surprise that it's the most powerful device for gaming. We hope you guys will build some really amazing games. Shield's built on Maxwell, the same GPU architecture that ships in Titan X, the most powerful high-end graphics processor available today, GeForce. It's got about twice the performance of an Xbox 360. In fact, on some metrics, shader horsepower particularly, it's about five times the horsepower of an Xbox 360. It leverages all the standards-based APIs, including OpenGL, OpenGLES. In fact, the controller itself uses APIs that are all part of the standard Android operating system. Nothing proprietary there. You can just take advantage of it and do something amazing. Of course, because it's NVIDIA and Maxwell, it runs everything that Maxwell does, which means game works. You get all the great tools, including Insight with integrated Visual Studio development, CPU and GPU profiling and debugging, middleware, libraries, tools, effects, source code. Everything that the game developers have come to expect are delivered here for Shield. We hope you can take those and do something truly astounding. To put that in perspective, we've got a table here that compares Shield to Xbox 360 and PS3. There's a number of metrics here, and of course, mileage may vary depending on how your game works or your application works. Shield is the first member of the GeForce family, or the uh, Maxwell GPU architecture, to deliver double speed floating point 16. Current shader precision is FP32. If you can take advantage of FP16, 
um, say for reduced range, color spaces, image processing, you can get up to a teraflop of shader performance using Shield. From a texture processing perspective, it's one and a half to two times the performance of the current consoles. It has competitive bandwidth. And of course, one of the things that makes Shield different than really all of the PS3 and 360 generation is that it's built on Maxwell, which means it supports effectively DX12. Now, obviously, DX12 is a Windows API. The Android version of that would be Vulkan or the derivatives of those kinds of things that will support those class of features. These would be low-level APIs for high efficiency, as well as next-generation features uh, well beyond the capability of DX9, which includes things like tessellation. From a delivered performance at the application level, we've got a couple metrics here. What we do typically is we do uh, state analysis uh, using sophisticated benchmarking tools to compare Shield to 360 and PS3. For GL Benchmark 3, which is kind of what I'll call legacy class workloads, it's about two times the performance of the past generation consoles. Mm -hmm. But for more next generation workloads, things like UE4's Infiltrator, which are much more shader heavy and make use of higher precision and off-screen render targets, as well as deferred renderers, it's closer to two and a half times the performance of the previous consoles. What that really means is that you can build great games. No one would argue that Xbox 360 or PS3 weren't capable of great gaming. In fact, there was $10 billion gaming industries built on those platforms. We hope you guys can build the next $10 billion gaming industry on Shield. One of the really cool things about all of this, of course, is that it's delivered in a super efficient form factor, 15 watts compared to about 75 watts. It's about one-fifth the power consumption of those previous consoles. And that's actually in their current iteration. When both of those consoles launched, they were closer to 200 watts. Now, you probably don't really care about the power consumption of a console, other than the fact that the, the lower it is, the sexier it is. At 15 watts, we built a super sleek form factor that people can keep in the living room and it's silent, where those other consoles are big bulky boxes and tend to be loud and noisy, which means that they don't go mainstream. Only the core folks are willing to stick one of those gadgets in the living room. Whereas with Shield, because it's small, sleek, and sexy, it can appeal to a much broader audience. Again, hopeful that you guys can deliver games into that much broader audience. Nothing says gaming like answering the old meme of can it play Crisis. So what we've got here is Crisis 3 running on the latest version of CryEngine playing natively on Shield. It's the full Crisis engine, which means that it's using the deferred renderer with off-screen render targets, FP16 precision, it's doing motion blur, depth of field, high dynamic range. This is the full Crisis 3 that we've worked with Crytek to port to Shield running natively on Shield. This is just the, the start, by the way. We can't wait to see what you guys do with it. We can't wait to see what a teraflop of shader performance in a 15 watt package in the living room is, how that's gonna revolutionize the world. I mentioned before that the living room is kind of a mess. And what I mean by that is the living room still suffers from the device per use syndrome. What I mean by that is you've got a gadget for your music, you've got a, a gadget for your Blu-ray player, you've got a gadget for your games, you've got another gadget for your DVR, you've got another gadget for you know Blu-ray and streaming movies, you've got a gadget for everything. That's old school. Remember back before the smartphone where you had a gadget for your music and you had a, a gadget for your navigation system and a separate gadget to make phone calls? The smartphone changed all that. The smartphone turned all those dedicated gadgets into apps. That's what Shield's gonna do to the living room. By bringing a powerful Android TV-based computing platform into the living room, we can cut the cords of all of those gadgets and they can be apps. Streaming, Blu-ray playback, DVR, music, games, all of that is just an app away. That's all where you guys come in. You guys can take your imaginations and an incredible computing platform like Shield and enable the computing experience to be brought to the living room really for the first time. You might argue that the game console was capable of that, but it was a special purpose device. As you guys know, most people use game consoles almost exclusively for playing games. They certainly don't use it as their primary Blu-ray player or their primary DVR or their primary music streamer or their primary video streamer. Some do, but that's not really the point. The people who buy game consoles bought them really just as a game console. The future is about a computing environment, smart TVs, powered by Android Beat and Shield, where all those uses are apps that you guys build. So you want to know that Shield can connect. As the flagship of Android TV, we didn't leave anything out. Of course, we've talked about Tegra X1 and all the capability it has. Uh, the GPU, of course, is a 256 core Maxwell. It has three gigabytes of memory. It has four 64-bit A57 CPUs from ARM. It's unquestionably the most powerful platform available for Android TV. NVIDIA has been better than anyone in the industry at delivering OTAs, updates, and will continue to deliver on that promise with Shield so that you know that your users will always have the most up-to-date operating system with the latest grace versions of APIs and functionality. 
Android TV is cool in that it has voice search. In fact, it's probably the best implementation of voice search I've ever seen. It's available with a remote that takes advantage of voice as well. And in fact, the game controller takes advantage of voice, so the user can always navigate and control their device with just a click and a voice speech away. Shield also includes private audio, so you can plug a headphone in and watch and listen and not disturb anyone, or maybe uh, not offend anyone if you're playing a particularly wild video game. It has all the great storage and connectivity options you'd expect. Uh, micro SD, so you can expand the storage. USB, so you could connect an external hard drive. Gigabit Ethernet and 802.11ac for the world's fastest network connectivity for streaming and connecting to the world of 4K. Shield's coming. In fact, it's coming sooner than you think. Availability, is, in fact, begins now at Google I.O. this, May 28th. Europe will have availability this fall, around the holiday season. And there's two SKUs of Shield coming. There's a 199 SKU that will come with a controller, a $30 Google Play credit, and 16 gigs of built-in storage. The higher end SKU has a 500 gig hard drive for all your amazing games. Again, the same Google Play store credit. The higher end version actually comes with Borderlands TPS, which is the latest version of Borderlands, in fact, which just shipped on the PC and the next generation consoles. For users that want to get some accessories, you can buy an additional controller at 59. They can get an aluminum machine stand uh, for 29 and that voice remote that I spoke to you about, if they're uh, streaming-centric and not gaming-centric, they can get for $49. We hope you guys are building amazing applications because Shield's coming, and we want the users, when they get their Shield, to have amazing experiences. To make sure that the users are excited about getting their Shields and they know where to get them, we've built a full retail and go-to-market campaign. Shield, of course, is consumer-ready with a full line of packaging for both e-tail and retail so that when the users go into the store to grab their Shields, they can pick it off the shelf, run home, and have a great time. We've got the largest go-to-market campaign we've ever done for a product NVIDIA plan for Shield. We want to make sure that the world knows about it so that the amazing applications and the transformation that's about to take place in the living room happens on Shield. It's a combination of NVIDIA channels, own channels, earn channels, PR, business, influencers, as well as an advertising campaign that includes both digital and out of home. So you're going to see Shield ads um, on billboards and airports. Really, we want to make sure that Anywhere people are, they're aware of Shield so that the smart TV resolution plays out and plays out on Shield. Shield's part of a family. You guys are probably already familiar with the Shield Portable, which is our first device that NVIDIA built. It combined the power of Tegra 4 with an integrated game controller and screen, really transforming gaming for Android. We tried to bring a core gamer experience to Android, where before Android was primarily about touch and casual gaming. Those games are great, but we wanted to bring a whole new wave. We followed that up about a year later with the Shield uh, tablet. It's the most powerful tablet available for Android. It's built off of Tegra K1, which is the predecessor to Tegra X1. It's built on the Kepler graphics architecture. It's the most powerful and capable tablet for Android. And of course, it's also pairable with a game controller, which means it's not only the best Android tablet, but it's the best Android tablet for gaming. And Shield, of course, fits right in. All the applications are compatible across all these devices. They all run Android. They all support the standards in every way, shape, and form. And they're all made to game. So hopefully you're excited, as excited about Shield as we are and you want to know how to get started. The easiest way to get started for developing for Shield is the amazingly obvious developer.com develop for Shield webpage. It walks you through everything you need to do to develop, register and develop for Shield. You'll download the tools, the SDK, you'll download Gainworks. Um, we have sample applications and source code. Really, all the documentation and information you need to build applications and great games that run on Shield. Maybe you've already got a great game. Well, tell us about it. There's a uh, website you can visit devconsult.nvidia.com that literally has a nice easy to fill out form you can submit your apks screenshots videos you can tell us about your game and then we can figure out how we can work together to bring your game to market for shield and let the world know about it if you'd rather do it via email there's a couple email addresses here send us email these are there's nvidia people at the end here uh, these are not bots <laughs> um, tell us about your game tell us why we should get about excited maybe you don't, don't know where to get started and you just want to talk to a human reach out send us an email we'll follow up we want to see you building great applications for Shield. OK, so we've told you about Shield. We told you that it's the most powerful Android TV device on the planet, powered by Tegra X1. We told you how it's the most capable 4K device, and in fact, the only 4K set-top box in existence. And probably more importantly, we told you how Shield is really the, the spear point of a whole new generation. It's the flagship of Android TV. It's the thing that's going to revolutionize the living room from a device world to a computing world. It's going to turn all those devices into apps. We want your apps, we want your games to be on Shield driving that charge. Please reach out. Let us know how we can help. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Can't wait to see your games and apps running on Shield.
Shieldhub at NVIDIA.com and Shielddeveloper at NVIDIA.com are both email addresses monitored by NVIDIA folks. If you want to know how to get a game onto Shield, if you want to know how you can work with NVIDIA with your game, these are the ways to do it. We hope you do something amazing with Shield because it's truly an amazing device. And the most powerful graphics processing available in the living room for Android. We hope you do something amazing. Can't wait to work with you guys.